great to be great to be here and being recorded uh, let me continue here all right so it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to present to you uh, the last advancements uh, and results uh, of the open educators factory project uh, which is uh, uh, particularly relevant we think at this very moment because of a few uh, things happening uh, not only the the UNESCO OER recommendation, which has put OER and open education, especially, uh, and, and especially, uh, I would say, educators' capacity building on in the spot, but also, of course, the considering the role of open education and OER within uh, the, the wave of online teaching that is following the COVID emergency. So we think that things will never be the same because there's no, I mean, this emergency will actually change uh, the way, is already changing the way we do things uh, in, a, in a rather long-term perspective. So we think it is time to try <clears throat> to make things better and, and more open. And actually this was the, the, the starting thought of Open Educators Factory when we started the project uh, already back in 2016. So it's already, it's a, a rather, I would say, sustainable project uh, hosted and funded by the Institute for Technology and Education uh, in UNIR. Uh, my, my colleague Daniel Burgos will uh, give a few, uh, a few words uh, later on uh, presenting the importance of this project within UNIR ITED. And actually the focus of this project, as the name says, uh, is, uh, open is the open educator. It's, uh, it is an applied research project that has developed a, an online platform that I will show in a moment with uh, more than 1,400 users, actually, this is, um, they are growing quite, uh, quite quickly, especially in the COVID pandemic, so this is already outdated. And actually, here I'm, I'm briefly bringing you uh, through the main results of the project in these uh, four years already of existence, and then focusing on, a, on an invitation to, to all of you. So first of all, uh, and you can see the paper, uh, the link to the paper down below, the first thing that the project has produced has been uh, an attempt to define what an open educator is. As you can see there, we, we spotted four components of activities of, uh, of uh, educators and we try to look for openness in uh, design, content, teaching and assessment uh, and we uh, let's say we, we, we discussed a lot with the experts and practitioners, uh, some of which are also attending this uh, conference these days, and we came up with this definition. And I'm happy to see this definition actually being used quite a lot in uh, different papers coming up. So it's, uh, I think we, we left a minimal trace uh, of our reasoning in, in, the, in the community. So very pleased with that. And then the same is true also for the framework that uh, follows and is built on this definition. Again, this has been is uh, described in a paper which you can see in the slide. And here, basically, we tried to devise different uh, levels of openness, uh, depending of, on, in, in the four different areas. Again, design, course design, teaching content, uh, teaching methods, and, uh, and assessment methods. And uh, let's say this is, uh, tries to be, wants to be a way to also to say that openness is not either yes or no, it's not binary. You can be more or less open. You, educators have all the right to be as open as they want in, 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 in all the areas they prefer. And then to get in a moment more open, in a moment less open, depending on the, on the context. And this, let's say, is a, is also this framework is has also being used uh, it's a pleasure when we see this being used in in other papers uh, analyzing different dimensions of of openness a third uh, piece of work we did was to um, look at the relation between oer and open teaching we know this is a bit of a chicken and egg problem uh, the more you use open R, oer the more you you tend to use open teaching and the same is true the more you use uh, open and collaborative co-creation approaches, the more you tend to look for OER. And here we sort of demonstrated based on the OEF data that actually there is a clear correlation. The more educators use OER, the more they tend to adopt open approaches <clears throat> and vice versa. So, and also, also here you have all the data and all the results in the, in the paper down below. But this is possibly the most interesting thing uh, for this presentation, that is the OER platform for, for teachers, for educators. 
basically the platforms is, is the platform is something pretty simple so uh, educators take a really quick questionnaire uh, describing how they teach which kind of materials they use in terms of open license in terms of assessment approaches so it's like i think 10 questions pretty straightforward and after those questions uh, the the platform is positioning the educator as you can see in the picture in the framework so you can already see how open you are, or at least following our, uh, our calculations, how open you seem to be in, in the different uh, areas of, uh, of, of your work. And, and this is already an interesting reflection. So you can see where you can improve, you can see where you're doing well, uh, and so on. And then at the end, you can just click and get some tailored recommendations uh, for you, depending on your level of openness. Of course, if you, if you are new to OER, you will get just some initial uh, things and initial capacity capacity building ideas and tools. If you are very good in open design, you will get an advanced uh, a link to an advanced course uh, open, of course, in this uh, in the specific uh, area of your work. Now, <clears throat> I, I was telling before that uh, both the UNESCO recommendation um, and other recommendation and a number of other uh, policy guidelines, uh, including the recent uh, by by the JRC on, on open educators and higher education. Is are pushing to for biggest for higher capacities of educators in using open approaches. Now, this platform is not a course. This platform is a sort of an appetizer. Is a sort of a self-reflection and self-evaluation tool. Again, we wanted to make it super simple and super short, also in, also in terms of uh, of use, because it's some, it is something that uh, can actually be used by professors and lecturers in any discipline and can, we hope, stimulate a bit the reflection and the, the first thoughts about how to get more open in, in, in one or more specific areas of action. This is interesting also for university leaders or managers because you can, uh, uh, if, if you have enough uh, participants from your university, you can see all of them in the platform, so in the, in the, in the framework. So as you can see in the image there, uh, you can see, for example, this is University from Palestine, who, who has 34 professors who have filled the questionnaire. And in this case, the leader, so the, 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 the person in charge, can see who is performing better, or at least this is an indication, of course, who is performing more or less openly. And this can help you also in designing some internal capacity building actions. And there is also a graph, an automatic graph uh, capacity that can tell you how open your teaching population, at least the one who has filled the question is, like you can see in the graph here. Now, uh, we have been presenting this many times, including at uh, OE Global, and we are collecting, of course, uh, critics and limitations. We are very much aware of this. Uh, so first of all, uh, each educator is different. Uh, we try to keep this difference in the platform, but of course, uh, uh, some level of generalization is needed. Uh, the institutional context matters a lot. So when we when we went into quality uh, analysis of the results, uh, the, the first striking result is that, of course, uh, the context is uh, almost everything. So all the results should be should be looked at by keeping this in mind. The third point is that educators' time is precious. This was the main the main outcome uh, of uh, it's quite quite. Uh, common sense, but in such an exercise is very important and when you want to build openness capacity. And also that educators motivation, motivation for training is not granted, especially in this period of, uh, I would say, overload and, uh, and say stress also due to the need of uh, teaching and going online. And so this is how we are now uh, working to improve uh, um, the OEF work and the OEF platform actually. So we are trying to make it more tailored. So pushing on the on the idea that openness as many entry points, you can be more inclined to entry, enter through the OER door or through the open teaching methods door. So you should be allowed to enter openness from wherever door you want. Then of course, we, we, we try to make it gradual as, as, as I was saying before, something easy and uh, and quick also, not really a full course, but more an appetizer to openness for a reflection of openness. 
We try to make it embeddable, for example, uh, in, a, in, a, in a course that they are running at the moment in, in Brazil. Uh, we had like, uh, I think, uh, around 400 participants for, from Brazil, because this is one activity of a course which is running the moment, uh, at the moment in Brazil. And of course, we try to keep it as open as possible also in terms of data, so that we hope that others can use this data uh, for their own research and to, to, to dig deeper into the different uh, levels. So as I was saying before, before giving the floor to my colleague Daniele, we think that things uh, will never be the same due to COVID and due to the big push that COVID has given to, of course, online teaching and together to the need of being more open and, and more equitable. And so we think that things uh, uh, can be uh, done better and in a more open fashion. And this is why we, we invite you to take the questionnaire there. You have the link. And again, this is a as a minimum is an interesting self uh, uh, reflection on your capacity of uh, on your of your openness capacity and your openness practices and if you're interested in uh, in uh, working with this uh, and in implementing this and using this tool within your university to build capacity and to fa facilitate this sort of reflection please get in touch with us you have our email addresses there now i would like to after this uh, quick run through i hope it was not uh, too confusing, but the presentation is uh, there in the, in, the, in the session page. I would like to call in uh, Daniel Burgos for uh, some uh, reflection words uh, on what it means, uh, this specific project for us at UNIRED and so on. Daniel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the presentation, Fabio. Hope you, uh, you can hear me properly. Yeah. I had some trouble to join. It seems that my computer decided to restart everything today, including devices, and I don't know what else. So I'm an, in an alternative device, so hopefully everything works fine. So this project is part of uh, the strategy of the university about open education at large. You know, We work with resources, with policies. We have an open policy, in fact, um, in, uh, in the university. Um, also with access and with data results, uh, you know that open means many things and has a number of a number of threads there. Uh, it's not just about resources. Uh, one of the things that we do is the competence building and the competence achievement of uh, on, in university faculty members and also in students. And Open Educators Factory fits perfectly into this uh, overall policy. Okay, it's not just about uh, content, it's about also awareness, it's about competences, it's about being um, open to work with openness, okay? So we have a very clear strategy to do this, and in fact, we, we is part of our, is part of our business model, okay? We recently published a, a, a work uh, along with a colleague from Beijing Normal University, Dr. Ahmed Tilili. Um, focus on the revenue models, meaning the sustainability models, okay? And uh, in our case, being a private university, this means a lot because we uh, we don't get any uh, public funding, uh, F subsidy at all, and whatever we actually invest in openness means that we are taking from a further revenue. So it's a, a very clear conscience that we do part of our social responsibility, university social responsibility. So I encourage you not just to go there to this project, which is uh, really nice and we like it much, but also to know a little more about what we do at the Institute and also at the university, go and explore. There are things that we have done. It's in English and Spanish, so you can easily uh, navigate through. And hopefully you can join somehow and we can do work together. So thank you everyone for joining today and hope that you find the uh, presentation and the project interesting uh, enough to, to collaborate with. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. Just one small thing. Actually, the OE Global is uh, one, uh, let's say, dissemination partner of this project together with other partners. So yeah. uh, let's say we feel part of the OE Global Open. I think we still have the OEC old logo in the side, so we need to change that. But we feel uh, pretty part of this uh, family with this uh, project, and that's why we, we we encourage you. This is something at the total disposal of the community, and as, as, as Daniel was saying, is part of a larger 
let's say, set of initiatives that uh, Tunir we are doing. And so feel free to be in touch with us to get uh, to be part of this. I think we made it with the time. We might still have one minute for questions. Yeah, no, we, we still have time. We have three minutes left, Fabio, oh. and that also you are very efficient. Uh, thank you both for your presentation. Uh, so I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, there was a first question from Barbara Klaas, and she was asking, how do you define open teaching? And then that question was followed by another one from Glenda Cox from South Africa, and she's asking, how do you define open evaluator? So back to you. Well, with three minutes, that's, that's not easy to, to, to reply to these. What I can tell you is that uh, um, in terms of uh, definitions, let's say in the papers I was showing before, we, we, we have a dig deep into existing definitions and try to provide our own view. Uh, I, I would like to mention, since we're talking about open teaching, uh, another um, open education related project that uh, we are currently running at uh, UNIRITED, which is called Open Game, which is actually focusing on open teaching and Daniel is the project coordinator, so you might want to say more. And there, we, we, not, we don't have the time now to go in detail, but the, the what I can say is that we're taking a, a an, an approach as open as possible to open teaching, meaning that we try not to uh, fall into the trap of definitions, of, of limitations. So open teaching is there only when you teach OER, is there only when you uh, do this on that, but uh, let's say any, um, any strategy, any idea, any practice actually, any technology that can help uh, teachers uh, bring down any possible barrier for us is open teaching. And actually, in the in the Open Game project, you can find a rather freshly published handbook with 24 open teaching practices, where you can see, I mean, this approach, you can find there even very low tech practices, even I would say some are even no tech practices. And this is our, uh, let's say, approach. Mm, for the definitions, I don't think we have time. Daniel, I don't know if you want to to shoot a definition. <laughs> ah, yeah, I think, no, 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 of course, you said the right words. It's an attitude. To me, it's an attitude because it's very difficult just to combine everything there. And you have to be open, uh, not just to work and to use, uh, but also to, to, to share. It has to have some reciprocity and also means sharing um, and also working in a number of layers. So is the attitude, meaning everything, not just the content, not just the consumption of the, of the, of the content being like a, 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 like a provider or a vendor machine. Also, you have to be aware that uh, open teaching and open evaluation means that you work with other people and also the open mindset. And along you can also provide things back. You should provide things back. It should be a mutual beneficial for everyone. Okay. So in fact, is what we are saying also along with this project. I have taken um, also the liberty to add some links to the chat. So you wanna go there about the project that we got, open game project that uh, Fabio was mentioning right now. And also we have an open repository on video lectures, TV on it, another open repository on courses in various languages, open it in. And we also have the open policy in English I put there, in case you want to go there, please just check It's part of what we do as an integral service to openness at the university. Okay. Thank you very much to both of you uh, for the clarifications. I know that this is a bigger topic to discuss and I'm sure that Glenda and Barbara and others would like to continue engaging in this, co in this conversation. So I do encourage all of you to actually visit that space, this session space on OEG Connect. Uh, where the presenter